update. Hope you're all doing okay out there. I guess, um, yeah, if you're living in that part of the world, um, hope you're gonna get through it okay. Um, whatever side you're on, um, not really sure how to start a pithy video about uh, modeling gear in the light of that. But anyway, today I wanted to do a pointless video because it's coming up to wait, it's already been, but I've had the Axifex 3 for a year now. Um, playing around with it and I wanted to sort of give my kind of verdict a year on. I will say I've been incredibly impressed with the unit and I thought, you know, when I first got it, I thought that dual lamping thing might be uh, a really cool thing and I thought I might use it a bit more than pot potentially I have. But what I've also found is that the FM3 for me is still plenty most of the time. It's not to say that the Axefex 3 won't be totally what you need for some people but it's just to say that I think the FM3 is a little bit underrated in my opinion for a lot of purposes you know if you're in a function gigging band um, I've done some videos on this and some other people but even those three foot switches are super super flexible um, and you can get a lot done with that so that was the first thing to say so if you're thinking about trying an FM3 I still think that's the perfect gateway to fractal stuff um, and I think they're running a sale at the moment if you're in the USA anyway so I think that's a really good litmus test to see if you get on with the fractal ecosystem is that a thing and all that stuff so in the year the things that stick out to me as being notable upgrades for the Axefex 3 so there's been the pitch reverb so adding kind of shimmer capabilities to every reverb in the Axefex which has been really cool so two pitch controls I think that's a, re a really nice addition and sort of brings the Axefex I think beyond anything really out there in the pedal world that I can think of that can do that sort of thing more like some of the posher rack units can do um, other improvements that we've had Mine's gone totally blank. It's useful, that, isn't it? We well, yeah, have missed some really obvious stuff. So Cygnus came out, so that was the new firmware with some more power amp stuff, which has since been superseded, I think, again, by another sort of uh, modeling technology. Um, also, we had the full res IRs, where we're talking about, you know, super long sort of 1.3 second IRs that could be used to run sort of room type IRs, you know, to add sort of that room sound in a way that no other modeler has ever really done before. I think the performance page that was added, so that made a, a big difference. So if you were gigging, you could set up a performance page and you can have controls for like your drive, your amp and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's been some shortcuts added. Lots of little bits and pieces, nothing potentially huge. I think the algorithm that Cliff's been working on, algorithms in the power amp, those have been updated slightly, I think, um, or quite a big deal for them, but you know, in terms of as an end user, things don't seem to have changed in a massive way. But there's, you know, steady and quite quick improvements coming along, um, and new firmwares all the time. The point is that I think that Fractal could do almost nothing for quite a long time before anyone would catch up with what's in here. So this is kind of my thinking is there's like a, a bottomless pool of stuff in here to get involved with whether it's the plex delays whether it's the cloud reverbs whether it's the pitch crystals whether it's the endless choice of amps you've got 300 amps in there um you know as i've said before you know more amps than any other modeler really combined loads and loads and loads of irs you've got um modulation you've got multi-tap quad tap delays 10 tap delays um you've got so much stuff in there that I think, you know, as I feel, I've spent quite a bit of time with the unit, you know, it's not the main thing that I use all the time, but I've spent quite a lot of time with it and still even today when I plug in, there's new stuff that I can pick up all the time, so I used a swell for the first time, the volume block today, and that worked really nicely. Um, I think I checked out the 10 tap delay for the first time today as well, and some kind of swirly diffused sounds there, um, and there's just so much you can do with it and every time you turn it on essentially you could be doing something brand new and I guess that's sort of the weak point of the Axe FX as much as it's a huge strength obviously for a lot of people for some people it might be you know a bit too much in one powerful box so 
yeah, I still think it's a really incredible unit. Uh, since I got this, they've also brought out that Mark III Turbo, which has even more power in it. I've not really found myself needing all of the power that's in there already. Um, in that preset you saw me playing in the intro, there was a, a reverb block, uh, a 10 tap delay block, uh, a Morgan AC20 and a PV5150 uh, swell. And you know, I was running the reverbs and delays in the super high quality. Um, so you can get an awful lot done with it. And uh, I would recommend starting with the FM3 maybe, and you know, Absolutely, if you find that you get on with that stuff, then the Axe FX3, I think, is still a good bet for a long while, and it's improving still, and I think even though sort of last year there were some other things that sort of cropped up onto the surface, you know, new things with a lot of hype, I still feel like the Axe FX remained pretty much unfazed by that. Um, you know, they've got their own issues with uh, bits and pieces that still need to be updated and I think it also looks like they're gonna never necessarily be on the sort of granular trajectory that Fractal are where they're sort of obsessive about the details of every single amp you know you could change cathode followers and all that sort of stuff if that's your bag it's in there if it's not your bag you don't really need to dabble with that stuff and speaker impedance curves all that attention to detail that's in there um, but I guess that's the point of Fractal. You can go in as deep as you want and you can keep diving down the rabbit holes. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my thoughts, I thought. Um, and then the other thing I think we talked about some competition, but the the main competitor to the Axe 3 that I thought that's been brought out is the Fractal FM9, which is kind of interesting sort of self-competition. Um, and I think that did away for a lot of users with the need for an FC6 um, with an FM3 but also having the sort of dual amp capabilities and some of those features that people were looking to the Axpex for. Um, so I think the FM9 was an interesting addition and probably will make a few people look twice at the Axpex itself, but I think um, that's totally fair enough anyway. Not sure how far through the waiting list people are with the FM9 as it is though. I think it's probably still easier to get an Axpex 3 than it is to get an FM9 at the moment, but yeah. I've had this for a year, you know, um, I still feel pretty much like I'm really only tapping the surface of what's possible in it, and so that's something that I want to continue to, to investigate, and particularly uh, things that I like about it still remain true, the, the reverbs, the delays, the choices of amps I think are, are second to none, and um, yeah, cool little unit, obviously, and I'm still editing it from the front panel. Yeah, let me know if you want that preset dropped in the folder as well. That was a PV5150 and an AC20 and some other things, but I thought it had some fairly cool sounds. Hopefully you're staying safe out there, and I'll catch you in another video soon. Axe 3, it's been a cool year, I think.